Okay, this concept is on inscribed angles. And inscribed angles are angles whose vertex, so in this case vertex B, is on a circle and whose sides, in this case AB and AC, contain chords of the circle. So angle ABC is our inscribed angle here. An arc that lies between two lines, so in this case, a arc AC that lies between two lines, rays, or segments is called an intercepted arc. So in the case of our inscribed angle B, angle B intercepts arc AC. If the endpoints of a chord or arc, so like endpoints A and C, lie on the sides of an inscribed angle, then the chord or arc is to is said to be subtended, subtend, is said to, sorry, subtend the angle. This is not easy for me to say. So in our diagram here, angle A, I mean, excuse me, angle B, intercepts arc AC, but arc AC subtends angle B, and chord AC subtends angle B. So now you have some vocabulary. We're going to now go over some theorems, and I need you to write these down, and you're going to have to memorize these because you're going to use these in your homework and quiz and on your test over this unit. One of the theorems says the measure of an inscribed angle is exactly one half the measure of the intercepted arc. So in our diagram here, angle ADB is exactly one half of the measure of arc AB. We have another theorem that says if two inscribed angles of a circle intercept the same arc, then the angles are congruent. So let's take a look at our diagram. We have angle ADB that intercepts arc AB, and then we also have angle um, ACB which intercepts arc AB. Since they both intercept the same arc, those two angles are congruent. Another angle deals with inscribed polygons. A polygon is an inscribed polygon when all its vertices lie on a circle. So if we look at our little diagram, this uh, pentagon, all the vertices lie in the circle. So that polygon is inscribed in that circle. The circle that contains the vertices is called a circumscribed Scribed circle. Let's say that three times really fast. All right, we have another theorem that says if a right triangle is inscribed in a circle, then the hypotenuse of the triangle is a diameter of the circle. So here we have a right triangle, ABC, and since it is a right triangle, AC has to be the hypotenuse because it is the diameter of the circle. Now the converse of that says if I have an if one side of an inscribed angle is a diameter of the circle then the triangle has to be a right triangle. So if I didn't mark that this triangle was a right triangle I would know immediately that it is because this side of the triangle is the diameter, therefore it has to be a right triangle. All right, I think we have one more here, and it's talking about an inscribed quadrilateral. Now remember a quadrilateral is a four-sided figure. A quadrilateral can be inscribed in a circle if and only if its opposite angles are supplementary. Now remember supplementary means adding up to equal 180 degrees. So opposite angles. So in this diagram, opposite angles would be E and G, 
N, D, N, F. And when I add D and F, it would have to equal 180. When I add E and G, it would have to equal 180. Now, let's do some practice. Name two pair of congruent angles. Well, congruent angles intercept the same arc. So A, B, D intersects arc A, D. But then I also have angle A, C, D, which intercepts arc A, D. So therefore, I'm going to say that angle B, oops, sorry, should do it up here, here. Angle B is congruent to angle C. Now, name the intercepted arc. Well, we've already done that. It is arc A, D. All right, find the measure of angle A. Well, remember our theorem said that the measure of an inscribed angle is exactly one half the intercepted arc measure. Well, the arc that's intercepted here is BC by angle A. So angle A is one half of BC, and BC is 84. So oh, that's angle A, sorry. Angle A equals one half of 84, which is 42 degrees. All right, find the measure of arc EG. So that would be this arc right here. So in order to do that, sorry, this is a typo. This should really say EF. And so that means it would be this arc here, EF. Now remember that the arc is twice the measure of the inscribed angle. So angle G equals one half of the measure of angle E or uh, arc EF. So let's put uh, 51 here equals one half, and let's just call this X. So we're going to multiply both sides by 2 to get rid of our half, and we're going to get that the measure of EF equals 102 degrees. Now, let's find the measure of angle H. We'll notice that angle H intercepts, intercepts arc EF just like angle G. So angle H is congruent to angle G, so angle H also equals 51 degrees. All right, I think I have one more. Yes, I do. Now, I want you to tell me which angles are supplementary. Well, remember we, our theorem said that in the quadrilateral, opposite angles, to, to be an inscribed quadrilateral, opposite angles must be supplementary. So in this case, M, angle M, and angle K are supplementary, and angle J and angle L are supplementary. Okay, now you're ready to start the first part of your practice, which is mainly just vocab, not a whole lot of math to it and then come back and watch me do some more difficult problems in the next video, and you can go on to practice two of 44B.